Why, why did you make this trip down here to South Carolina today? Well, I've spent four days on the eastern seaboard uh, with a, I think, from my perspective, a, a pretty celebratory message, but also a cautionary message. Tuesday night was a great election result from my perspective. It was a very powerful message that the President of the United States, uh, his policies were being refuted, uh, Democrats were being refuted in, in Washington, D.C., and that we were going to give you Republicans one more chance. This wasn't a we love you Republicans, as I said earlier. This was about we're going to give you Republicans an opportunity to govern. Don't blow it. So Lindsey Graham, Tim Scott, Mitch McConnell, et al., they have this opportunity uh, to govern, to lead, working with the House, Kevin McCarthy and John Boehner, et al., uh, and they've got the opportunity to put good, thoughtful legislation on the President's desk, legislation like opening up the XL pipeline so the jobs can be created and America be, can be more energy secure, uh, tax policy that allows this country to get back to work, giving incentives to companies like BMW and to the tire industry that's here in, in, in uh, uh, South Carolina. I mean, those are opportunities for jobs. And that's what this is really all about, is put policies in place where Americans can have a job and have the dignity to take care of themselves and or their families. And then obviously, um, I know a little bit about the, the issues of border security. And I think Americans really want that border secure. And they think, rightfully, that it's the federal government's responsibility. Texas has been doing its part, but we shouldn't have to be picking up the whole tab, and it shouldn't even be our responsibility. So I think you'll see legislation that directs the president and funds the effort to put the people, the technology on the border to finally secure it for the American people. Uh, Governor, um, you mentioned that it would be May or June before you made an actual decision on whether to run. If you were to make that decision to go ahead and run, what is it that you can offer to the state of South Carolina and the entire country as far as if you are the elected president? Well, regardless of whether I make the decision to run, and I may sit down with my wife and the people I uh, trust and love and make the decision not to run. It won't be because I'm not prepared this time, but we may make that decision. But regardless of whether I run or not, I'm going to stay engaged in this conversation with Americans. I've had 14 years of, of managing being the CEO uh, of a very, very successful state. And I think the policies we put into place, whether it was tax policy, regulatory policy, legal policies, or those skilled workforce education policies, uh, that I have something to offer to the people of this country in a thoughtful, respectful debate, discussion about how to get America back working again. I gotta ask you though, isn't this part of a, a pre-trip if you do plan to run? Well, this is part of what I've been doing for some time. Um, and I'm interested in the short term here. Uh, if we don't get this governing part right, 2016 is not going to happen for Republicans. I'm pretty comfortable in that. We have the opportunity to govern. We've been given the privilege to govern. We best not blow it. Governor Perry, uh, gr greetings from the uh, mighty eight, home of the mighty eighth Air Force, sir. <laughs> And uh, I'm worried about our military. And you are, you're the home of uh, Fort Hood where that horror took place, and they still want to, don't want to call it terrorism, yeah. and this, this administration has been decimating our military. Well, over the last four years, the military budget's been cut by 21 percent. And uh, our military is being hollowed out. Um, I think there's some question about our ability to carry on uh, multiple major events in different theaters. Um, with all of that said, we've still got the greatest fighting force the world's ever seen. Amen. And sacrificial young men and women. And yesterday we had the opportunity to salute all the veterans that served this country. 25 years ago, uh, this last week, the Berlin Wall fell. Uh, and I think America needs to get back to the same type of leadership uh, that brought the fall of the Berlin Wall and Ronald Reagan, where when America says there is a red line and you cross it, there is a price to pay. And our allies know instinctively and intuitively that America will be standing with them. That type of leadership is lacking. We need to get back to it. We need to have the funding. And the funding occurs by creating an economy where people have a job and they are creating the tax resources that go into the federal coffers to refund, refill those coffers that the military has been cut so drastically over these last four years. Thank you. Thank you.